The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faith, self-control. Hi guys. Every now and then I see a, a bumper sticker or a meme or uh, maybe a poster on somebody's wall that just has one word on it. And when I see these things, it always bothers me a little bit. The one word that sometimes appears on these things is the word believe. Just believe by itself. The reason why it bothers me a bit is because I'm a bit of a, a bit of a grammar geek. I'm a, I'm a word person. And there are some words that are not intended to stand alone. There are some words that need to be connected to other words in order to really mean what they mean. And believe is one of those words. Now, maybe grammar makes you feel the way math makes me feel. If so, I apologize in advance. But believe is one of the transitive verbs. It has to be applied to something, like the word want. You can't just want. You have to want something. You can't just ask. You have to ask something. You can't just get. You have to get something. You can't just believe. You have to believe something. Same idea for the word faith. Faith does not stand alone. Faith can't just be faith. It has to be faith in something. It has to connect to something, which helps make sense for me um, when I see it in this list of character traits that are called the fruit of the Spirit, because the, most of the other ones are easily recognizable as relational activities, relational behaviors and attitudes. Faith is one that doesn't immediately jump out as being something that is between two people, something relational. Faith kind of looks like the odd man out. Um, and I think that's because we generally associate faith with something intellectual, or maybe something in the heart but mostly intellectual. Something that is how we think about something that is true or something that we want to be true or that we believe will be true someday. But the Old Test or the New Testament was written in Greek. And again, getting just a little bit geeky, um, translation is just this whole thing. It's a fascinating, fascinating subject if you get into it, and it can be really challenging. The word faith in the original language, it's a six-letter word in Greek. I won't try to say it out loud because it, it'll sound dumb, but that same word, interestingly, is translated very differently in different places in the New Testament. In some places, that six-letter word is translated as faith, and in some places, it's translated as faithfulness. Faith and faithfulness. They seem almost opposite. For example, um, the word, the places where it's translated Faith. It, it, it means to, to have faith in, to believe in something. For example, uh, in the letter to the Romans, uh, the Apostle Paul writes in the third chapter, he writes, We conclude that a man is justified or made right with God by faith apart from the works of the law. In other words, completely separate from anything we can do, from any way we can behave, from anything we can accomplish, we are made right with God through faith. So that suggests the idea of having faith in God and what he can do. The idea that it is something intellectual 
or emotional that we direct towards God. Now, in the same letter, the same writer, in the same chapter, uses the same word, but it gets translated differently. In this case, he's writing about God's faithfulness. Same word. God must be true, even if everyone is a liar. God is proved right and triumphant. God is faithful, but it's the same word. In other words, God is consistent. He is trustworthy. He is reliable. God keeps faith with us and with his creation. Same word, very different translations. So, you know, how does that make sense? I think to some extent it can come back to the idea of covenant that we talked about before. Covenant is when we stand face to face, we look each other in the eye, and we say, yes, I will. I will be faithful to you. I will be faithful towards you. You can have faith in me. I will have faith in you. We agree together to keep faith and to have faith, to trust and to be trustworthy. I mean, I could, <laughs> I could uh, sneak some tracking software onto my husband's phone if I wanted to. I could keep track of where he goes when he leaves the house, but I'm not going to do that because I have faith that he will keep faith with me. This is especially important when things are difficult and things are difficult right now. For some of us, it's a very lonely time. It's frustrating. For some of us, um, we're having to deal with some disappointments, things that we were looking forward to that are not going to happen now. For some of us, it's um, financial. And those stresses can be very real and very profound and very, very challenging. When times are difficult, our faith and our faithfulness can take a hit. Something interesting that I've been thinking about lately, I've heard a few people quote this line from the writings of C.S. Lewis. I can't remember which book it comes from, but it has a lot to say to us right now. This is the quote. God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks in our consciences, but he shouts in our pain. Pain is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. And there's a lot of truth in that, but I find it amazing that the same guy, a number of years later, when he was grieving the loss of his wife, wrote, he wrote this book, really good, worth reading, track it down. And it's not even very long, quick read. Same guy, in a time of pain, in a time of struggle, in a time of, of difficulty, he wrote this. Meanwhile, where is God? This is one of the most disquieting symptoms. When you are happy, so happy that you have no sense of needing him, so happy that you are tempted to feel his claims upon you as an interruption, if you remember yourself and turn to him with gratitude and praise, you will be, or so it feels, welcomed with open arms. But go to him when your need is desperate, when all other help is vain. And what do you find? A door slammed in your face. And a sound of bolting and double bolting on the inside. And after that, silence. You may as well turn away. The longer you wait, the more emphatic the silence will become. There are no lights in the windows. It might be an empty house. Was it ever inhabited? It seemed so once, 
and that seeming was as strong as this. What can this mean? Why is he so present a commander in time of prosperity and so very absent a help in time of trouble? This is the same man who wrote that pain is God's megaphone to arouse a deaf world. Faith isn't always easy. Faith doesn't always look how you expect it to look or feel how you expect it to feel. It reminds me of uh, Psalm 13, where the writer writes about how God has forgotten him, about how God is hiding from him, about how the writer is, is anxious and in pain and how he is being dominated by his enemies and how his eyes are growing dark and how he will sleep in death and how he is shaken but it ends with, but, but I trust in your faithful love. So isn't faith just an exercise in choosing to believe something for which there is no proof? Isn't faith blind? Isn't it delusional? Well, no. Having faith and keeping faith requires courage. Courage to challenge ourselves to be what we need to be. It requires honesty to know and to recognize that we are taking a chance on each other and on God. It requires humility and the willingness to change. Faithfulness is born of relationship and connectedness and promises that we make. Faith and faithfulness come to life when we follow Jesus' example in the ways that he related to the Father and to the people around him. Faith and faithfulness grow in us as we hear and respond to the Spirit's reminders and corrections. Faith and faithfulness are the willingness to believe and to be believed in to trust and to be trustworthy. I've mentioned Adrian Plath before. Absolutely one of my favorite writers. This is a really good book. Highly recommend it. He writes this about uh, a disastrous vacation that they have spent at a, a Christian music festival and it's rained the whole time and it's been windy and the tents have been blowing down and it was just a mess. So, he writes this. I asked Anne this afternoon if she'd enjoyed it. She said, oh yes. Despite everything, it's good to be among all these people who are doing their best to do what God tells them. We're a funny old crowd, though, aren't we? Yes, I thought we certainly are that. Silently, I asked God to show me what really mattered in this strange world of tents and house trailers and big tops blowing down and celebrations and Christians and cold water and foul weather. As I opened my eyes, a figure passed our tent on the road. It carried a huge wooden mallet. The walk was a plodding, weary one. The young man was disheveled and grimy. He'd probably been up for the last 24 hours at least, working all night in the wind and in the rain to save some of the marquee tents. There was the faintest of nightlights still shining in his eyes as he walked. Somehow I knew that the weather would never quite put that light out. There you go, God seemed to say. That's what it's all about. Faith and faithfulness. I'm going to go sing a song. I hope that you will click on the link that will be up here. And if you know the song, please sing along with me in your own home, or at least just read the words and see what God would have to say to you through this song. <laughs> 